Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Friday, February 12th, 2016. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and welcome to This Week in Alternative Energy. This has been an extremely busy week for the contributors Mark Dancy and Simon Derkut at revolutiongreen.com. Uh, I'll post the links in the description below. So um, let's dive right in. First up, the technology that charges batteries for electronic devices could also provide fresh water from salty seas, says a new study by University of Illinois engineers Kyle Smith and graduate student Ryan Mello, who published their work in the Journal of the Electrochemical Society. We are developing a device that will use the materials in the batteries to take the salt out of water with the smallest amount of energy that we can, Smith said. Berkeley Lab has been making pretty great strides lately at shrinking the size needed for a fully functional particle accelerator, perhaps as small as a bench top or even a tabletop. Simon reports on this one as he sees possible application in a small scale nuclear fusion reaction. It's a very worthwhile read. Black Light Power is back in the news. Um, they are now renamed Brilliant Light Power with a power device they're claiming over Unity from by creating, of all things, Brilliant Light and converting it to electricity using photovoltaic cells. They're calling it the sun cell generator system. The technique is interesting, but the numbers are still questionable. This article was contributed by Mark Dancy. After 16 months of development, Boeing has delivered a fuel cell energy storage system to the United States Navy for testing. The cell is being tested uh, to determine its ability to support the energy needs of military and commercial customers. The system is the first of its kind using technology called a reversible solid oxide fuel cell to store energy from renewable sources, including wind and solar, producing clean zero emissions electricity. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'll ever see one of these in, in behind my house. It's a pretty large size. Anyway, moving on. Japanese automaker Suzuki plans to commercialize a hydrogen-powered fuel cell motorcycle with plans to start testing it on public roads next year. Japan's transport ministry is expected to write safety and environmental standards for fuel cell bikes as early as January. They would be the world's first such regulations. Once approved, Suzuki will begin test driving the cycle on public roads. In a related article to the non-Julian magnetostriction alloys I reported on earlier that I personally plan to investigate more thoroughly, a collaborative effort by a team of scientists from Stony Brook University and Brookhaven Lab has led to the discovery of a new way to generate very low resistance electric current in a new class of materials. The material, the material scientists worked with, zirconium pentatelluride, Penta telluride. Uh, Mark Dancy says in the article, what caught my eye and why I highly recommend this article is the following claim. In these materials, current increases much more dramatically in a static magnetic field. In a classic generator, the current increases linearly with increasing magnetic field strength, which needs to be changing dynamically. This should be of great interest to magnetic generator researchers. Well, that may or may not be true. I still plan to look at the 8317 ratio iron gallium alloy myself. All right. A collaboration between researchers at the University of Gothenburg and the University of Iceland has been to study a new type of nuclear fusion process. This produces almost no neutrons, but instead fast 
heavy electrons or muons or muons since it is based on nuclear reactions in ultra dense heavy hydrogen aka deuterium a considerable advantage of the fast heavy electrons produced by the new process is that these are charged and can therefore produce electrical energy instantly the energy in the neutrons which accumulate in large quantities in other types of nuclear fusion is difficult to handle because the neutrons are not charged these neutrons are high energy and very damaging to living organisms whereas the fast heavy electrons are considerably less dangerous both heating generators and generators for electricity could be developed within just a few years a company called Uplug Products has a Kickstarter going to bring to market yet another magnetic power, magnetic motor power generator. The claim is 120 volts AC, 17 amp max, or 2 kilowatts, and will have a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $1,795. This is a 20 pound unit that has a shoulder strap that can be carried around uh, from site to site and in and out of your house. There is a definite lack of data and in independent third-party testing reports other than a mention that they do exist. We will have to wait and see, like so many other things. In a bit of a brain bender from Simon, uh, he has a habit of doing that, entitled Gravitational Waves Detected, he reports, quote, the news is Let's see, the news is all over the place at the moment about two LIGO systems seeing the same signal, thus showing that gravitational waves exist. From Wikipedia, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO or LIGO, is a large scale physics experiment to detect gravitational waves. Co founded in 1992 by Kip Thorne and Ronald Drever of MIT. LIGO is a joint project between scientists at MIT, Caltech, and many other colleges and universities. Simon points out that the two traces recorded by the two LIGOs at Hanford and Livingstone, which are stated as 3,000 miles apart, or 16 millilight seconds apart, are very similar, but not identical, and what that could potentially mean. It's an interesting read. One of my favorite YouTube publishers at the moment is this guy, Robert Murray Smith from the UK. Robert is a world-renowned expert on graphene and its applications. He has joined forces with SunVault to integrate the supercapacitor he has been developing over the last several years he calls the EESD, or the Electrical Energy Storage Device because it really is a whole new class of capacitor, easily 100-fold greater energy density than the best supercaps available commercially today. This is no joke. We're talking about 5,000 to 20,000 farads in a package the size of four or five credit cards stacked on top of one another. Robert has agreed to be my very first guest on a special Zero Labs Live event that I will air and I'm hoping will be on Saturday, February 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time or 9 p.m. Central European Time. This event should last about one hour and will include an open Q&A session in the chat rooms afterward. I am very excited to have Robert as my guest. I hope you will mark your calendar and join us. Please stay tuned for more info as he is a very busy guy and the February 27 date is not written in stone yet. I will keep you posted. If you do use Twitter, please uh, subscribe to my Twitter feed and you'll know instantly whether or not uh, the, the event is on. <laughs> my eBay auction for Crazy Cash's kooky contraption is still going on. There is one active bid on it so far. If you'd like to own a piece of quack science history, be sure to get your bids in now. When it's gone, it's gone. Bidding ends tomorrow, Saturday, February 13, at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, and 10 p.m. Central European Time. Don't miss out, Sterling. <laughs> You're going to really disappoint me if you do. 
And finally, how many of you remember the water-powered flashlight Mark Dancy came up with the idea, the idea for during a humanitarian outreach he took part in in the Philippines maybe three years ago? Well, it's here. It's really finally here. The Hydrolite Lantern, now being featured in Gizmag, and will be is now being being fe in fe is now being featured in Gizmag, and will be followed by an entire host of water-powered products like flashlights, radios, dive lights, phone chargers, and more. Mark needs our help in spreading the word and asks if you could join in the Thunderclap campaign they are running. It is a way of helping them by using your social media connections via Facebook, Twitter, etc. to spread the word about the Kickstarter campaign they are launching to bring these to market. All the information with the links will be in the description below. It's just a matter of clicking the support button via Twitter or Facebook, etc. And that's all for this week in Alternative Energy. Finally got through it. I hope you enjoyed this roundup and join me again next week for more interesting renewable energy news from the alternative energy world. A great big thanks to all of you who have joined in to support me, my work, and this channel through Patreon, PayPal, direct donations via checks, and yes, even Bitcoin. Links are of course in the description below. If you've got some research you'd like to make public or a new widget that you've been working on in your garage. And we'll get that up there that you've been working on in your garage, showing promise you want people to know about. Drop me a line at zero at alt zero news at altenergy.org. Links to all articles for everything you've seen here will be in the description below. And as always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone. <laughs>